Hey guys, Tim here. Um, I'm going to show you how to take apart one of these PS3 cameras and I built some a case for it. I'm going to make a little video of me taking one apart and put it in the case just so you can see. Um, I'll probably fast forward through some of the boring parts. Um, take off these little rubber pads that are covering the screws here. Um, and take all, out these screws. Now all these little screws uh, we're going to use for the case that I built. So just take them out and put them aside. Um, there's a lot of them. Uh, and they're all the same size so it's pretty makes it pretty easy. Um, get these puppies out. The hardest part is cracking this case open and uh, not too bad it's just and now that I know how to do it uh, I can do it okay you don't really have to worry about the only part we're going to be reusing besides the board inside and the cable or is the uh, is the little lens cap okay so now that I've got that part I get my super fancy wedge device and just dive in there Make it crack a bunch. Hardest is is getting this. I don't know if you can see this. It's uh, getting the side one off next to the little bubble, and you gotta get a nice solid crack on that one. I'm gonna go for the other side. A nice crack, and then it comes off. There's that piece that comes off. Now we got a whole bunch of screws on this here. So this, as you can see, this is the board. Uh, I'll just start pulling screws out of that. I don't know how well you can see this video. I'm trying to get it so it's good. I've done this a couple times now, so it's faster. Um, like I said, the only thing that you're going to be using is this little board and the cable, and then the front uh, front little lens cover that twists and allows you to go through from the uh, 56 to the 70 degree. So once you got those off the board, there's two of them down here for this. For the base mount. Again, these are all the same size. Let's take those out. And the base pops off. Nice weighty base. Put that one aside and then this whole thing pops out. Um, so once you got this whole thing popped out, uh, if you've taken off all the screws, the uh, microphone case will come right off. And then these little microphones, all you, all you have to do is bend them back and forth and they just pop right off. So that's what I do, bend them back and forth, pop right off, pop right off. So then you're left with the circuit board and the cable for that piece. Now we want to get the this little lens piece out. That's a little little bit harder. It's not too bad, but if you take if you get it just right, you can kind of pry it out. It's got these plastic tabs. You don't want to break off because we want to we're going to be using them in the design that I did. I'm going to pop them back in. So Kind of tricky actually. There we go. I think I got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it pretty clean. So you see that one that has a ridge on it with these little pins that squeeze in. And I've printed out my own little covers for them that fit in here and just like this. And now they've got the same functionality as it was in there 
except this is going to go on my case. So we've got our pile of screws here. We can throw away the little speakers. Throw those away. Got our case. Pull the case off. Um, I am going to probably, as a last step, glue this guy in here. Um, whoops. Because he kind of press fits in. Maybe a little, little teeny bit of sanding to get him to press fit in. Um, I think this one press fits in a lot better. I don't know. Mm. Well. Okay, so now that you've got, we've got, I've got, I've printed out this case. Got top and the bottom, and then the lens cap goes like this. Um, I can take the board now. The first thing I want to do is route the the cable. It's got, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little slot in there that's actually a square cross section. And we push that down. Um, now, unfortunately for my design, I actually need to cut off a little bit of this rubber on the inside because it interferes. That's probably something I can change in the design so you don't have to do that. But it's just a little teeny bit of rubber on the inside so it doesn't interfere with the top of the case. Watch me cut my fingers off on the video. Shove it all the way down in there. And then you've got the uh, board to put in the case. Now, it's a pretty snug fit for, for my case design, mostly because I want it to be. Um, it's, you know, practically a press fit in here to get the on this side to get the, the case in. Uh, it's Like I said, it's, it's probably more snug fit than I wanted it to be. And then it pops down in the bottom so that it's flat. Then the, import, the important part is that it's all flat against the measured surfaces. So now you can see that's in there really nice. It's not going anywhere. Um, but to make sure it's not doesn't go anywhere and it stays secure, we're gonna drill some holes and we're gonna put some of these screws back in. So, I've got a real small bit in here. Uh, if you want to know what size it is, it is um, 1.27 millimeters. So, 1.27 millimeters, and I'm going to drill a little hole in, in here. And because of that, the properties of this ABS plastic. Uh, it makes for nice uh, screw holes and um, it's super easy to drill just the right size hole and not have to tap it or anything and just uh, screw this in and you know you don't need to tighten it down a lot just screw it in so it's snug I don't know if you can see that but that's one here and I'll probably just be doing one, two, three, just to snug the board. Like I said, it's practically press fit. Having them three like this will prevent it from tilting. Um, this will also be one of the ways, and I haven't gotten to that point yet, but when we align these two cameras together, um, if they don't line up exactly, then... We, we, they don't line up exactly then we could use spacers in places or uh, you know prop something up or I don't know what yet so I haven't gotten that far um, I've been working hard on it and so that's a nice hole there nice and snug we'll give it one more make sure it's not going anywhere not like it is but
Okay, so got one, two, three screws in here. Snug fit's not going anywhere. This still works. So you can see when we put it on, there's two little holes for the little lights. They kind of come right about up to the surface. And then there's some sunk countersinks in the top that correspond to uh, solid points on the bottom where we're going to drill some more holes and, and, uh, and uh, screw some more screws. So take it like this. It fits. Yeah, it's good. The ABS plastic kind of shrinks a little when you print it, so it's it's been a little difficult to get the dimensions just right because um, I started out in PLA which is uh, a lot easier and it doesn't shrink so uh, anyways we'll start off and do one of these same screw go a little deeper get one of the little guys Probably don't, can only see the back of my hand, huh? Trying to get this. Not that you really need to see much with this. This is really just, you know, getting it snug, getting the top on, stay on. It's really not, uh, you don't have to crank on it or anything. And uh, it's nice to use the same screws that came with the, with the uh, camera itself. So I'm going to do this one. Exciting video. Maybe I'll fast forward it through this part. Just was watching somebody screw screws into a cases. So exciting. Pretty solid. I got two more screws to make it nice and sturdy. Well, there's there's really going to be no reason to pull this apart ever. Drill this hole when I'm here. And you're going to have screws left over, which is always a good thing because you drop these little buggers and you'll never find them, especially if you're over carpet or something. Okay, so you see now we got our new case. It's nice and solid on the wire coming out. And I've made these mount points, I don't know if you can see those, for to mount it on my fancy dancy holder, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's see if I can get this. Sand the hole a little bit. 
Anyways, this is going to go on like this, and then you still have basically you still have the opportunity to change between the two. Oh, why am I? Again, the ABS shrinks, so it's hard to make tight fitting parts sometimes. There we go. Okay, so that's basically what it looks like. There'll be some, uh, well, I'll put some glue in that to keep that piece down. Um, but you still basically have the opportunity to change the lens. So now that I've got those two, now that I've got that one, I can show you a little bit about how these are going to be assembled. And so let's go on to the assembling. Just the fun part. Okay, so I've got two cameras and I've made a, a case for them. Um, what I'm gonna do is, for right now, I'm, I'm gonna set them up a particular way, but you can kind of set them up however you want because it's a little bit flexible. These are four millimeter uh, hex screw heads. Um, they fit right in the hole and then they kind of press fit I don't know if you can see, I can push it in there. You can see it press fits nice, nicely in there, so it basically provides a stud there. So I'll do that for both of them. Kind of push it in a little bit. So I've got two nice and solid pieces there. Do that the same for the other one. Like I said, it's pretty close. It's nice and snug, which I like. Um, I think the whole point is to get these cameras mounted nice and snug, and uh, you know, not moving, especially in relation to one another. So now I built this uh, uh, base unit here to attach these cameras to. Um, it's basically a flat, flat case. I've uh, press fit a uh, quarter twenty nut in it for it to go on the uh, tripod. Um, sanded it nice and smooth so it's nice and flat and got the holes in the right places. So what I'm going to do is take the first camera and we're going to put make that camera basically a, uh, a camera that doesn't move on the mountain. So I'm going to got some washers here. Again, these don't need to be cranked on, they just need to be stood in the way the design is. It's, it's extremely sturdy, the way it is. Um, so then, I'll take the next camera, which I designed to kind of tuck in behind this one, and put it one foot in the main area and one foot in the slot. And as you can see, we can move it up and down like this and even overlap if we want to. Um, so on the other side we'll put a wing nut here and you know this is this is the other thing is these don't have to be wing nuts they can be countersunk nicely countersunk screws um, they could be hex heads I mean it doesn't matter um, and if you, for some reason, if you uh, uh, don't have, well, I don't have another washer on me here somewhere. Um, so now, now I've got those nice and mounted, nice and sturdy, and I'll bring up my tripod here. 
You can see there's just mini, mini tripod. And uh, I, can, I can mount that. I can just mount it on the quarter 20 nut. And tighten it up here. There, now it's all snug. And uh, let me see if I can get you a better view of it here. Um, like this. And then, like I said, you've got the ability to just loosen this nut and rotate it, right? You can even go all the way down to where they're 90 degrees apart. And the bottom one stays fixed, and you can control the rotation there by the rotation on the, the actual mount itself on the, uh, on the tripod. So I can loosen the tripod here, and uh, I can loosen the tripod, and then move basically the bottom one uh, up and down depending on you know where I want that one to, to point and then this one is in relation to that one. So um, I'm gonna hook it up to one of the Montcam systems now and see if see how close it is to actually being vertically uh, the cameras being vertically together which is really the whole point of this. Okay, later. Bye.